We've got here insurance, which is very important. This is why everybody's here, right? To sell insurance. Well, you've got to know what insurance is. Okay, here's the basic definition of insurance. Insurance is defined as protection against a financial loss. So that's the basic definition of insurance. Why do people buy insurance? Because they want protection. Now here's the key though. What really causes people to buy insurance? We know everybody needs insurance, right? Or at least as an agent, that's, where, that's what everybody needs insurance. That's why we're getting into the business. Well, what causes people to buy the insurance though? Here's what really causes them to buy it. Risk. Now a lot of times they ask basic definition questions on the exam about the definition of risk. The definition of risk is the chance of loss. So we said insurance basically is defined as protection against a financial loss. Well, the reason people buy insurance is because risk is present. The chance of loss or uncertainty of loss. Now, beyond this definition of risk, there are two subcategories of risk that you need to know for your exam. And the first one we'll call pure risk. Now, pure risk is a type of risk that we have where there is a chance of loss only. No chance for gain. Now, we make a big point of this because pure risk is insurable. Pure risk is insurable. So this is very important for your exam. What types of risks are insurable? Pure risks. Let me give you an example of a pure risk. Example of a pure risk would be getting sick. Okay, I get cancer. And obviously I wasn't planning that I was going to get cancer. This is an unforeseen thing. So I get cancer, I'm going to need to have treatments. And it's going to be expensive to get those treatments. Pure risk. Pure risks are type of risk where there's no potential for gain. What do I have to gain from getting cancer? Nothing. Another example of pure risk. My house burns down. Okay, what's there to gain from that? Lightning strikes my house, burns down. Nothing. This is why I buy insurance, to cover the financial loss that will occur. Now, I said there's two subcategories of risk. So we have pure risk. Then we have what's called speculative risk. And this is a special type of risk where there is a chance for gain and also a potential for loss, both in the same risk situation. So here, not insurable. This is not insurable. You can't buy insurance for speculative risks. Well, what's an example of a speculative risk? Gambling, buying lottery tickets. Hey, I know a lot of, lots of states that have the multi-state uh, Powerball or similar lottery programs. So I buy a lottery ticket. Actually, in fact, I bought one last night. So the Powerball right now is at $100 million. I could win. Spent five bucks. I could lose my five bucks. What type of risk is that? Speculative risk. Speculative risks are not insurable. If they were, think about it. You go to Las Vegas. Okay, you're at the blackjack table and you put down $1,000 on a hand of blackjack. Is there an insurance agent there saying, hey, you want to buy some insurance for that? It's kind of risky, right? No, they're not. Why? Because there's a potential for gain. They don't want to insure risks that have potentials for gain. They only want to insure pure risks, risks that only have a potential for loss, no chance for gain. Okay, so those are some basic definitions. Some other basic definitions which you're probably already aware of, uh, premium. Premium is what everybody has to pay for their protection that's provided. So whether it's for auto insurance, health insurance, any type of insurance, that's what you pay to the insurance company. Uh, something that is also probably familiar with is an insurance policy, the word policy. That's actually the legal contract between the insurance company and the insured. So it's legally enforceable. So we'll talk about some legal issues related to contracts later in this section because they're important. It's a legally enforceable contract. So we need to know what causes it to be legally enforceable. So we'll take a look in your, in your book here. This is actually on page one in the general insurance section. We'll go through here. I'll tell you some things that you'll want to highlight and make sure when you go back and review to study, make sure you know them for your exam. Okay, on page one, 
we have that first paragraph. Now in that first paragraph, the first sentence, highlight, put a star by that, that's the legal definition of insurance. So it says insurance is a social device for spreading the chance of financial loss among a large number of people. Okay, very important there. Next paragraph, put a star by the definition of insurer. And in the third paragraph down, highlight the first sentence. We said the policy is the legal agreement between the insurance company and the insured. And also in that paragraph, put a star by loss and claim. Uh, loss, they define as a reduction in the value of an asset. In order to be paid for a loss, you have to submit a claim to the insurance company. These are all terms you're probably already familiar with anyway. Uh, the fourth paragraph down. Okay, here's where we start seeing some test questions. Risk, highlight, put a star by that. Probably a test question on that. Uncertainty of loss or chance a loss will occur. Reason people buy insurance. Next paragraph below that, speculative risk. Test question, is speculative risk insurable? No, or maybe they'd word it like this. Which of the following types of risks are not insurable? The answer being a speculative risk. Uh, we have the next paragraph, pure risk. Type of risk that insurers are willing to accept. Chance of loss only, no chance for gain. Okay, so a lot of definitions there. We go a little bit further down on the page, bottom of page one, elements of insurable risk. And we have the last paragraph on the page says, there are four ways to manage risk. Now right above that paragraph, last paragraph on the page, I want you to write this. Write risk management. Now this, what we're getting into here, is referred to as risk management. And let's say we define our risk. And we'll say that our risk is, we're worried about being involved in a car accident. Okay, that's our pure risk. Being involved in a car accident, having it be our fault, we're financially res or legally responsible for those financial damages. So how can we manage this risk? It's present. We want to manage it. We've got four options of how we can do this. As stated in the last paragraph on the page, second sentence. Here's our four options. A risk may be, number one, retained. Avoided, number two. Reduced, number three. Or transferred, number four. So let's take a look at these in the order presented there. Number one, we can retain our risk. Okay, so how do we retain our risk? Say we want to fully retain our risk. Do we buy insurance? The answer is no. If we want to 100% retain our risk, we don't buy insurance. We self-insure. Take on the risk 100% ourselves. So we want to retain the risk. We can self-insure. Now, another way to retain the risk, if we buy insurance, is called the deductible. So the deductible is a portion of the risk we retain, even if we buy insurance. So we'll talk about the deductible a little bit later on when we get into property policies, auto policies, homeowners dwelling, commercial property, health insurance. Okay, health insurance policies, a lot of them incorporate deductibles. Okay, so we'll talk more about deductibles later on when we get to that. 